So there's a new auto BBM transition feature in version D-Day 2023, starting from build 7651, which is a public release. So what is that? Well, if you look into the change lock here, you can see a little bit here because it actually says auto BBM transition and then it says VTJ script. So it's actually just some scripts that you can use essentially. So there's actually two of them. That's one called auto BBM transition and that's one called auto BBM transition options. And you put that into script. So let's finish the video here. Now, of course, not. let's see what we can do with it um, and why it's been added, because I believe it's been added uh, to support the, the Rev5 uh, controller from Pioneer. So uh, if you don't know exactly what that can do with auto BPM transition, I would uh, recommend uh, going to uh, the digital detail tips video, this one. I'll link that in the video description because that has a, uh, a great little, uh, actually not a little, few minutes on this feature where you can see what it's really intended to do. But what it really is intended to do is to automate uh, big BPM transitions while keeping the bit matched. So it uh, takes care of the transitioning of the BPM, matching it and going slowly back or forth. Um, and then you can handle the actual mixing. And you can also maybe add a little bit more to it, but we'll get back to that later. Now, since Visual DJ is, of course, script-based, um, we don't need a Rev5 to be able to do this stuff. We can use the scripts ourselves. Um, so we'll get back to do it in a simpler way, but for now, let's start with the scripting. So I've created a custom button right here with the auto BPM transition script. So it simply says, auto BPM transition. And it has a, quite a lot of, of explanation on how this can be used. We'll get back to some of that later. But for now, it's just auto BPM transition. So what does it do when you actually click it? Well, what it does is it takes the BPM difference between the loaded decks. So we have this deck now that we're on, that's at 87 BPM. And we have one that's on 100 BPM over here. And then it jumps this one to the same value as this one. And then it gradually moves both of them uh, simultaneously into the BPM that was over here when we clicked. So right now, if I don't do anything, I don't even click play, I don't do anything, I just click ABT, uh, also BPM transition, we should see this jump and then down to the 87 and then both of them going back to 100. So like this. Slowly. And you can change how fast. We'll get back to that. So that's basically what it does. And of course, that's a little bit more interesting. Let's actually uh, sound playing. So let's do that too. So that's basically how you can use it in its simplest form. So since this is gonna be in time all the time, you can actually have the crossfade in the middle while you do it. And you may not have any problems cl clicking the play button and the, uh, the ABT button at the same time or just in time like I just tried to do. But uh, that might be pretty easy on a controller, but now here using the mouse, you can also get a little bit of help because I can tell it to uh, auto sync on play so now I don't have to be so precise over here so let's try uh, starting this with the trust fader open so basically same demo So this auto sync on play when you're using the mouse can be a really good idea. And like I said, there's quite a few options for this. And those are set with the auto BPM transition option scripts. 
So I map the secondary button here, and I can right click so we can look at the script. So that's actually a combined script of a lot of options and then auto BPM transition at the end. But if I mark one of these options, you can see here in the description that it's to enable or disable certain features of the auto BPM transition. And the first parameter can be length, loop, stems, master tempo, and auto start. And when selecting stem, he stems, this is how you actually do it. So that's some of the stuff that I've used up here. So you can see it says auto BPM transition options, and then it says the length of the transition. So, uh, and that's, of course, the transition of the BPM. It's not going to be the transition of the mix, since not, it's not doing the mix right now. It's just doing the, uh, this BPM transition. So you're doing the mixing still. And then it has a auto BPM transition option loop on. So it actually starts uh, a loop. Uh, and that's not going to be in this length. The loop that it's using is just going to be the whatever use that's currently set. So let's minimize that a little bit. So four, be uh, four beats. And then it's uh, setting the stems, telling it to take vocals on, off, and telling it to do auto BPM transition option stems instruments off. So it's taking off the vocals and it's taking off the instruments and it's taking off the bass. So that's not a lot of vocals in this, but it should really just leave behind the beat, right? And then it does the BPM transition. So what should happen now is that it should set the length to 16. It should start a loop. So this one over here loops instead of just continuing. And then it should uh, remove the vocals. It should remove the instruments and it should remove the, uh, the bass. So only the beat is left. And then, of course, that should come from the next track, right? So let's just try using this. So let's try to uh, see if it, how it sounds when we actually do it. So now using this button instead. So let me just go back to where it was, like this. So put the track into the transition. Like that. So did you notice that everything except the beat went away and this loop started and it started doing the transition like before. So that was basically what it was all about, about right? So that was one way to set all these options. Uh, and we'll get back to uh, a few more of them just in a second. But before we do that, here's a, a, little, a little important information maybe. And that is that this thing doesn't clean up after itself. The idea being that you'll probably just want to load a new track here, so that'll just basically reset everything. But if you just start playing the, tr the same track here, all the end results of the trans BPM, uh, or the also BPM transition will just still be there. So as you can see right now, my BPM is still high from the transitioning, the loop is still on, and if I go into stems, these stems are still off. So it's not resetting any of that stuff. Of course, if I load a new track, it will do, but it's just something to keep in mind that you can continue doing this, in, uh, at least with this script, uh, again and again. So that's just a little thing to notice. And of course, this script that I've just used will be in the, in the, in the description. Um, but now we're going to move on to maybe something a little bit simpler and maybe don't really want to use this anyway. And what is the simpler way? Well, besides adding the script, uh, Atomics has also added a pad page for us with some scripting in it, so we don't need to do the scripting ourselves. And that's, of course, available on the extensions. So I go into extensions here, in settings, so this is where we are. And then I go to the pads, and then I basically search for auto BPM. And here it is, ABPMTR. That's short for auto BPM transition, and it has all these th uh, things on it. So let's look at that one. Of course, you click here to install it. I already have it, so I don't need to do that. But you click here, and it'll appear over here in the drop down. So let's just close this again and go into the drop down and locate it. It's right here. So, what can this do? Well, it can do a lot of stuff. It can basically do almost everything that the uh, that the scripts can do. 
So, uh, of course, this is intended to be used on your uh, pads, on the controller. So that's how you normally use it, but for this video, we'll just use it on the screen. And as you can see, it actually remembers some of the, uh, the settings that we just did, or the options, if you will. So it has already knows that it should remove vocals, instrument, and bass. May not want that anymore, so let's just enable them again. And that it should do looping. Uh, may want, not want that, so let's enable that again. And then there's two more interesting ones, which says auto start and MT. And one of those, well, let's demo all of them, basically. So let's get started. So the two settings up here are the length of the transition, and then it's the, uh, the target versus source shuffler, because what BPM do you want to go to? And I'd say you pro more probably want to go to target 99% of the time. But we'll do a little demo on source at the end. So let's not stick with this. This was a 16 beat that we've used before and target, which means we move to the BPM on the new deck. And then we have on, let's turn it on. We have auto start. That means that it automatically presses play on the other deck uh, when we start this. So instead of me going to the play button all the time, let's enable that. And then let's see that I can just do this with one button click now. So we move the crossfader back to center because we can safely do that because we have the auto sync on play enabled. So it'll be in time, basically almost how bad I do it. And we've enabled auto start. So I don't need to go over here and click the play button. And then we just do basically the same demo again. So basically all I needed to do was click the on button, it'll automatically turn off when it's done, and then eventually makes out of the, uh, the, the outgoing track, right? So that's basically it. So that's a really simple way to do it. So let's do a few more demos that do basically the set the same, uh, but with a, a few changes here. So I'm just going to keep auto start on because I like that one. Let's take this one. That's master tempo. So. When do you want to use that? What does master tempo do, you may ask? Well, master tempo keeps, keeps the key uh, where it is while changing the tempo, right? So it's basically the same as this thing. But uh, this can take that out uh, uh, for a little while. So what it will really do is it'll change the pitch uh, of the outgoing track here, either up when it moves up to this BPM over here, or down. So it's kind of an effect. Uh, I'm not sure how often you'll use it, but you can try listening to it here because you can definitely hear it happening. So let's do that again, uh, but this time without the master tempo. So I hope you noticed uh, the pitch going up here starting to sound more and more like a chipmunk. So that's an effect. Uh, I think that most commonly you'll keep this enabled. So let's go back so we can try it again. And then now with the loop, you should have to do that before, but let's try doing it with a faster loop, like maybe what, just one beat uh, to make it like a little bit more extreme. And because we're not waiting here, because the play starts instantly, because of auto start, we can do a little bit more with keeping shorter loops and still have like a, a, a flow, I would say. So maybe something like this. Like that with the fast loop. So let's just remove the loop again. And of course, these down here are just what they say they are. We've already tried them previously, but we can do another one maybe. Say, well, we just want to keep the instruments. It's not a lot of vocals, so let's just do instruments and then see that it 
uh, only keeps the instruments when moving in to the next deck. So we reset, and reset the cast fader, and unloop, and then we are ready to go again. So. Like that, just to put other instruments over here. And then, like I said, we can of course try doing it uh, much slower, up to 64 beat maybe, or even much faster, so it's a bit more dramatic. So let's just try doing a, a 4 beat one to target, and then enable everything here again. And then uh, do the 1 beat loop, maybe, like this, and let's see what that sounds like. But of course, now we've reset these. But that won't change the actual stems of the track. That's what I said previously. The track is still uh, left behind like it was. So we have to reset the BPM. We had to reset the crossfader. We maybe had to reset the loop. But even though I've, pre uh, I've uh, reinstated these, so this will be part of the actual uh, transition, they're not reset on the track. So let's go to stems and say, well, we actually kind of need you right now. So that's an uh, important thing. But of course, again, if you have like, reset and loop uh, in the settings uh, for ordinary playing, um, then this will happen automatically when you load the next track. Um, but for now, just have to remember to reset this. So this is for the transition. The stems are on the stems pad bits, right? So let's try doing it again. So much faster transition, right? Like that. Then there's uh, the final one. So using the source is maybe more relevant if your current playing deck is not actually at its, at its regular BPM. So maybe if it's playing even faster than the other deck, like this. And then using it, you should get go back to the original BPM for this. So maybe something like this. And now, of course, you have the new deck playing at the original BPM of the one over here. But if you were already at the original BPM, then of course the transition would be pretty boring. So that's not really relevant. So going to the source one here is mainly if this is not at its original BPM. So this was just an introduction to the uh, auto BPM transition in the latest virtual detail release and the pad page they provided uh, to make it easier to use the scripts than actually programming them themselves. There's more stuff that you can do, I'm sure. For instance, this could be combined with mix now, so you didn't even have to do the cross fading. I guess they could also be combined with some mix effects to make it even more interesting. Um, but I think I'll get back to you on that in another video.